had the Western Water and American Food Security Act introduced today. In a press release, you said the bill will achieve four goals, move water through the Delta, create a path for new storage, protect the state water project, and preserve water rights. How will this bill accomplish those goals? Well, the most important way it does is you got to make sure water moves through the Delta. So it makes sure the flows are up without repealing an Endangered Species Act. It uses the most modern science, so you can not deal with the old science, but deal with science that's actually accurate, so you can get water flowing without disturbing the fish. Secondly, it goes back to the old cow fed. There were five reservoirs and dams, from Shasta to Sites to Temperance Fats, that need to be raised and built. And they never have. Those reports have been sitting for more than a decade. So we pull those out and get those moving again. Protects the state water project, which is very important to Kern County. And most importantly, protects water rights, which California's been based upon. You know, we passed water bills for the last two Congresses. And five years ago, we had 172% of snowpack. But we didn't save that water because we didn't have the reservoirs to do it. A lot of that water went right out to the ocean. We talk about doing desal today, making salt water fresh water. In California, they're sending fresh water out to the salt ocean. That's wrong. And we've got to stop letting environmentalists stop this. This is common sense. Everybody can get behind. It can help grow our economy. We're looking at the lost jobs in the Central Valley. We're looking at your own residential yards that you can only water on certain days. This is not the California dream or the golden state that we all know, and it doesn't have to be that way. We should not accept people saying no, and we should make this bill become law. You alluded to it a little bit, the discussion about the Endangered Species Act and how fish on that list are protected and their water supply is protected as well. You even said there's a problem prioritizing fish over people. How is this new proposal going to change how those endangered species and those sciences are evaluated. Well, you, you'll use modern science. And just like in technology, how your cell phone has changed, your computer changed, what's happened is science has become stronger, so we're more accurate instead of using the old numbers. Today, they won't pump at all in fear that they may hurt fish. We say pump, and if fish are being harmed, then you can prove it and then stop it. Let's put people before fish and let that water flow through the delta. So the Democratic side has uh, already added a little bit of a rebuttal after this bill was introduced. Senator Barbara Boxer quickly responded. She said, quote, the bill is same old, same old, and will only reignite the water wars. What's your response to that? Well, Barbara Boxer is the reason we didn't get a water bill last year. I worked with Senator Feinstein. We had an agreement, and Barbara Boxer blew it up. She told me on the phone that, no, that water going to the ocean actually preserves a purpose. It helps the fish. And I just think... Her perspective is wrong for California. Why do all of us have to be harmed? Why does our economy have to go down? Why do we have to restrict our growth? Why haven't we built a new reservoir? Why haven't we built a new dam? Why weren't we prepared for this drought when it's coming and we wouldn't have to have this? I can work with Senator Dianne Feinstein, and I've already met with her this week about this bill. I expect that we get this bill through the Senate, regardless of what Barbara Boxer does, because you know what? The people of California need it, and we need to be able to plan for our future, for our economy, and for growth. What's the timetable? Where does this bill go from here? Well, this bill is introduced today. We've been working on it for the, all the beginning of this year. It will move through the House in July and be sent to the Senate, and we're very hopeful that the Senate, we could come together, find common ground, and move a bill to the President's desk. All right, uh, Congressman, that's all I had on the drought. I wanted to ask you real quick about sure. the trade bill, but I know we've taken a little bit of your time. Sure. Do you have a, a quick second to answer a yes. question about that? Yeah. All right, so that trade bill passed the House this morning. It moves to the president's desk. Specifically, how will that law help the people of Kern County? Well, how that law will help Kern County, it's Trade Promotion Authority. What it does is the president right now can negotiate, but the public can't know. Now, no bill, no trade agreement can become law without being out there for 60 days. And now the House and the Senate have jurisdiction to say yes or no to it. So it gives greater accountability. But what's more important, when you look at Kern County, we grow the food not just for America, but for the world. 95% of the population is outside of America. But we have a hard time entering those markets. We need to lower those tariffs in other countries so our products can enter. If we're allowed to compete on a level playing field, 
We will win. I believe in America. You know, since we've lost Trade Promotion Authority back in 2007, there's been a hundred trade agreements around the world. And America has participated in zero. We want to be able to compete around the world, and that means from our small businesses, but most importantly, when you look at the agriculture in California, you look at the, from the fruits, from the nuts, when they're picked, yeah, they go to our local supermarkets, but within less than 24 hours, they're around the world in another country selling, and that's creating jobs right in Kern County and making America more prosperous. All right, Congressman, I got one more question for sure. you. Chris Christie, it looks like he's going to add his name to the growing list of Republican candidates. That puts that number at 14 right now. As somebody that has a leadership role in the Republican Party, how do you view what's your reaction every time somebody adds their name to the list? I wonder how many are going to end up running. I mean, uh, we're getting a very big field. But the one thing I will tell you, that's healthy. Let, let competition, let ideas come forward for a vision for America. We're looking forward where, unfortunately, on the Democrat side, they're going backwards. They're going back to the 90s. I want to make sure it's not what America will be in the 21st century, but what will America look like in the 22nd century. That will be a fundamental change, and I'm very hopeful, and I look forward to the day, I hope it comes faster, that we'll have somebody new in the White House. At what point will you start to narrow down your list for uh, evaluating who you'll endorse? I know quite a few of them. I talk to them often. I want to see them compete, and I want to be know specifically what is your vision for America. Are you focused on the economy? Can you create jobs? Can you make it competitive? What is your tax policy? What's your energy policy? What's your water policy? And also very important, what is the, the, your policy to restructuring government? These agencies have become too big, too burdensome, and they're holding us back. What, how can you unshackle and be able to move it forward? And then when it comes to foreign policy, right now our friends don't trust us and our enemies don't fear us. I want America to be strong at home and strong around the world, and I know we can do that again. I've watched it happen with Ronald Reagan, and I believe it can happen one more time that that next century can be ours. All right, Congressman, anything else you want to say? No, thank you very much for having me. All right, thanks for your time. Sorry for some of the technical No problem. Take care. All right, have a good one. Bye.